Hi everyone, uh, welcome to ELI, the place where you get your daily dose of inspiration for entrepreneurship. And today we have with us uh, Mr. Udit Sood, founder of uh, EcoRite, a consumer brand that makes affordable, reusable, natural, durable and eco-friendly bags. Udit is a graduate of University of Queensland and has attended IM Calcutta for MBA. Udit has uh, worked with companies like uh, uh, Hindustan Unilever and Zomato for six years before starting his own venture in 2017. Hi Udit, uh, welcome to ELI. Hi Priya, nice to be here. Uh, Udit, uh, I would request you to introduce yourself to our audience, please. Uh, so Priya, I think you've done a good job with my background. Um, so essentially I started uh, Ecorite in 2017. Uh, prior to that, like Priya mentioned, I worked in a couple of um, highly reputed organizations, which uh, you know gave me a lot of knowledge and uh, let's say the passion to start something of my own. Um, a few things that you don't know about me that are not on my LinkedIn are that I love acting um, and I am an amateur uh, blogger. I just don't blog enough, but um, yeah, running your own business means you get to do a lot of stuff. So I do a lot of writing as part of EcoRight at least. Okay, I'm curious to know more about, you know, your uh, the things you have not mentioned uh, on LinkedIn. Uh, can you tell us more yeah. like what if there are some active acting, um, you know, can we see some? Yes. And all? Uh, I'm sure there will be some videos online. I can try and uh, find and send them to you. So I started acting when I was in school. And I did a lot of stage plays then. I was lucky enough to have some very great teachers um, that uh, fueled all these activities in school itself. So I did my first play when I was just 13 years old. And I was the lead actor of that play. And subsequently, I think I have participated in about 50 stage plays since. Uh, seven or eight as actor, uh, three as director and about 30 stage, 30 to 40 stage plays just as uh, production. Okay. Uh, I loved being on the stage so much that I would do anything. Even if um, they said, you know, go buy some props, I'll go buy some props as long as I'm contributing to a, a play in some way. So I have um, been a theater enthusiast um, and I have done theater in school as part of my undergraduate degree and uh, as part of the MBA. So I think that has been something that's been constant through my life, at least till uh, I was studying. Okay. Uh, are you still uh, practicing the, the same uh, today as well? I act like a business leader <laughs> <laughs> and uh, act like a founder every day. <laughs> but I think that's the uh, doing a business is uh, more than a full time job. Um, it transcends boundaries of time and space. So I think I haven't had the chance, but you know, I never know. Uh, maybe a little later, sometime in life, I would love to do it. Right now, the thought doesn't even come to mind given the current scenario, but I hope to pick it up sometime later. Okay. Okay, Udit. Uh, Udit, let's uh, come to our uh, 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 regular questions. Uh, tell us uh, what is EcoRite? Uh, what is it? Um, so Ecorite was born out of the consumer need um, to create eco-friendly products that are affordable, appealing, um, and with high utility. What we noticed, um, the gap in the market was that a lot of brands are doing eco-friendly products, but they're doing it, um, you know, at a premium to their normal products. Um, so therefore, eco-friendly becomes a little less accessible. Uh, for everyone. On the other hand, there are also eco-friendly products like a standard um, jute lunch bags, which are not very appealing. So if the thought was that if we want to make eco-friendly, so going eco-friendly is, is an inevitable, right? We need to, everyone needs to make that change in their lives. But how do we drive that change? Uh, by creating such products that you would carry because they're great products and not because, just because they're eco-friendly. And I think that's how EcoRite was born. It was the idea that let's create some great products that people will want to carry. They want to go eco-friendly, you know, rather than have to. And I think that if um, our, the thought is that if we can appeal to a consumer um, 
and to the tastes of a consumer and to their aesthetics, then they will want to go eco-friendly. That's how EcoRite was born. And that uh, we started in 2017 and we've been focused largely on bags, uh, where we've been creating different kinds of eco-friendly bags for different spheres of life. So we have grocery bags, vegetable bags, um, laptop sleeves, lunch bags, uh, just trying to figure out eco-friendly alternatives of all the kinds of different bags um, in our consumer's life. Uh, we are currently looking at moving towards different other eco-friendly products as well, but that's gotten slowed down a little bit because of the pandemic. Uh, in a single sentence, Udit, uh, what would you say the prob real problem you are solving? What is the core problem you are solving? Uh, the core problem that we are solving is that we are making eco-friendly fun. Um, you know, that's our value proposition. That uh, The core problem is that plastic, global warming are our real issues. And we are trying to get consumers to solve these problems by giving them great products. Okay. So uh, now uh, let's get into the early days. Uh, tell us yeah. uh, what motivated you to uh, become an entrepreneur? Um, a few things actually. Um, I first worked in a great organization, uh, which is Hindustan Unilever. Previously, I also interned in the Tata Group as part of my MBA. So I had a chance to see one large organization there, very ethical, uh, very honest organization. Um, then I moved to Unilever, which was again a very innovative, um, great place to work, right? And I realized that while I was learning a lot, it, I wanted something a little different in life. Um, you know, something not as structured maybe. Uh, and that's when I moved to Zomato. And at that time, the, you know, the current startup boom, you know, it was very exciting to move to a young startup move, uh, you know, where you get a lot more responsibility at an early age. So I moved to Zomato, uh, where again, I had a great time for about two and a half years or so, where, um, you know, right from the beginning, I was, I started with managing teams of 10, 12 people, ended up managing you know, cross-functional, cross-country teams uh, with more than 100, 200 people as well. So I think it was a great learning experience. I got a chance to work with uh, some very, very bright minds. And that's when I realized that, um, you know, while it was great to build this organization, it would be nice to do that for myself. Um, because I got a lot of satisfaction from working in a startup. So I figured, you know, can I get more of it if I do it on my own? And I think that's what one of the core motivating factors was. I was drawn to entrepreneurship um, through my experiences. Secondly, I come from a family of entrepreneurs. My grandfather's an entrepreneur, my dad's an entrepreneur. Uh, and I think it kind of runs in the blood. So, you know, when I decided to do my business, it wasn't difficult to convince my family because that's what they have also done to their life. And they have also done so after having graduated from really uh, prestigious colleges. Um, so it was entrepreneurship was a choice for both of them. And the same way when it was a choice for me, I think I got, you know, it just seemed like, yeah, it seems like the right thing to do. Okay. Uh, since you mentioned uh, you, you belong to a family the, of entrepreneurs, can you tell us uh, what what is that kind of a family like? Uh, <laughs> Um, in what sense would you like to know? Like how, how we, uh, approach problems, how we deal with each other, what is expected out of each other? What is that uh, I think, dinner table conversation? Uh, that's an interesting question. Um, so, um, by my grandfather, um, was an entrepreneur and he always, uh, you know, we've, you know, grown up seeing him tackle many different issues. So I think what one thing that is different is that no one day is the same, even on the dinner table, because we're constantly talking about new problems. We're constantly talking about, um, you know, new challenges, new achievements. So I think that way it's great. Um, my uh, grandfather is a, was from the first batch of IMM Dabad. And uh, after working for a few years, he decided to start his own business. And, you know, at that time, uh, doing business in India was not as easy. So the kind of challenges that he faced are very, very different from the kind of challenges that we, that I face today. 
so it's very interesting to have these conversations uh, with him you know from you know two entrepreneurs from very very different eras so i think it's definitely very interesting uh, on the dinner table uh, my father ha- um, uh, graduated from iit bombay and then he went into business on his own and he's been doing um, doing his own thing for 30 years and i've seen him pivot from you know one business find an opportunity move to another business um you know uh, and that has also been very interesting because i've seen his uh achievements i've seen his struggles in different businesses and that also gives a lot of learning uh, you know there's a lot of interesting advice within the family when we are faced with an issue uh, a lot of our business practices today are driven by uh, advice that that my dad gives me and my grandfather gives me because they've seen the same issues in different ways before okay would it tell us uh, about your childhood would like to know uh, how uh, it uh, the childhood of a, a child of entrepreneur is like i don't know any other childhood <laughs> like so i don't know what would be different um but it was uh, it was always interesting because um, you know we would like on diwali and stuff we would always have something uh, a small puja in the office uh, or something so i think as a child i've always seen you know been coming to my dad's business um so you know i think that's what i think that would be different like i have kind of been ingrained with that uh, ever since i was young where i've seen him running his own business i've seen um you know like a lot of people who were associated with my uh, dad 20 years ago are still with him so you know i've kind of grown up with these people um so Uh, who are now you know running different parts of the business and stuff so i think uh, that has been interesting i have i have a lot of friends uh, for many many years because of the business okay with uh, uh, let's come back to uh, again the regular questions i uh, would like to know how did you arrange yeah. the uh, uh, financial runway to build this venture um i had support from friends and family Uh, i had also worked for a few years so i had saved up money on my own um so definitely had a lot of support from friends and family in the beginning um also my wife is also now a uh, part of the business she is my co-founder so she was um um she joined a year back and one of the reasons that she took a while in joining is also because it kind of helped our finances um you know be more comfortable so you know while i took the risk um, you know she continued and she has also had a great career uh, or, you know where she's worked with some great people so she continued doing that uh, and when the business got a little more stable is when you know she came and joined and um, it's been a year since she has joined and it's you know uh, our business is now doing much better than it was because now we have two focused minds on it uh, but i think uh, the way we took it was a little slowly and steadily the other thing is because we are in a consumer goods kind of business um we started making revenue from day one um you know in a lot of other businesses which are a little more tech based or uh, businesses you know you need to spend many months building the product until you can start seeing revenues and monetization uh for us it was a little easier because you know we started seeing revenues from day one you know we started selling and we started seeing money coming in it was all about managing it properly to make sure that we can keep growing okay uh, speaking of uh, day one would you tell us uh, about your day one what are the things you did how did you get your first customer in fact i would like to know how did you come up with the product first uh, because a product has to be there before you get the customer no yeah um so in terms of the product we did a lot of market research i had a lot of help again from friends and family um you know income because when i was just a single person it was a lot of people giving their extra time you know in making it happen so it was my father my sister my wife uh, they all helped in figuring out the right product uh, also being from ahmedabad i have access to manufacturing facilities here so i was able to do prototyping uh, designing fairly easily uh, we tied up with a few freelance designers who helped us also create the product and create the designs and uh, then it came like once we got the product ready you know there was a big question mark okay now how do we sell the product right um so the 
the first thing that I thought was that we should um, find channels in which our target audience is there um, and find channels where we can get quick consumer feedback because that would be um, very crucial uh, in getting you know, initial traction. Also getting initial consumer feedback because we need to know what we're doing right and what we're doing wrong. Um, so which is why we decided to launch on uh, on our website and on Amazon. And the focus on Amazon was because uh, as soon as you have the product ready, you can launch within a few days. Um, and the Amazon team was also, you know, excited to see a young startup, uh, you know, doing eco-friendly stuff. So we launched in Amazon India and Amazon US on the same day. So within a month, we had, you know, hundreds of consumer feedbacks, both from Indian consumers and the American consumer, which I think was very crucial. And that's kind of like feedback. It's been a feedback loop. We launch a product, we monitor the feedback, uh, you know, make changes to the product. And which is why we've been able to get the product right uh, consistently over the past three years. Uh, and we have very, very high ratings on Amazon and uh, both in India, US. We have since expanded to Amazon in UK, in Europe, Australia, and Canada. Okay. Uh, would it tell us uh, what is your vision with uh, EcoRide? Where do you want to take it finally? Our vision is twofold. Um, Part of the vision is related to the environment, right? We foresee a world where we are not faced with the environmental disasters that we are facing today. Uh, because of global warming, we're seeing cyclones increase, floods increase, um, forest fires, um, for example, the one that happened in Australia. Now, all of these things are very large things for a single company, single person to solve. But we are hoping that EcoRide is at least a part of the solution because there are so many people working on it now. Um, there are activists like Greta Thunberg that are creating awareness. We are hoping that on the consumer side of things, we are able to drive the, the feeling of going eco-friendly within each single person. Uh, you know, uh, And that is what our vision is, that we play a small part in the next, let's hope we can get over this in the next five or 10 years. And you know, there is a contribution from our side. I think that is what the vision is, that we want to drive real change uh, in what's happening right now. Okay. Uh, would it tell us uh, about your team? Uh, how many people are there in your team? What, what kind of people do you hire? Right. Um, so we have nine people in the team. Um, like I said, um, my wife and my co-founder Nikita is... Uh, part of the team. So the way we work is now that we have divided responsibilities between us. Uh, so we can focus on our core areas. Um, within the team, generally the team composition is that we have a lot of youngsters um, that have, you know, between zero to three to four years experience because um, one, they come with a lot of energy. And second, it is this generation that actually cares for the environment. Right. Um, while we are hiring, we try and make sure that our values align uh, with our employees. You know, if they have that passion to create great products that are good for the environment, then our work becomes that much easier because we don't have to tell them what, you know, why, you know, let's say, why not use plastic in our bag, even if it's useful. You know, that question never comes up in the team because they know the mission that we are going after. Um, so I think that is very important um, and I think it's the um, the alignment of values the energy and the passion that the younger generation brings so we have a mix of designers we have a mix of engineers commerce grads uh, we don't really look at uh, too many things we just look at the passion that the person brings um, because we believe that the if the intent is there a person can learn and do anything. Uh, but if the intent is not there, they might be very good at their work, but they will not be able to perform in a setup like ours. Okay. Uh, tell us, uh, who is your role model when it comes to entrepreneurship? Uh, who inspires you? That's a tough question because I think there are so many businessmen that I look up to. Um, like 
initially definitely my father and grandfather both are my role models because i've seen them growing up uh, i've seen the ups and the downs and i've seen that if you continue working hard with a clear mind you know whatever the down may be because see um there are often there are issues that you can't control i mean there are so many businesses that have had to shut because of the pandemic um you know but as soon as this happened you know because of you know the advice and all you know we just put our head down and said okay how do we make it work um it's not something we can control so i think they are definitely my role models um i also admire uh, certain aspects of some great entrepreneurs uh, like i mentioned uh, the tata group uh, because of the it just shows that you can build a great organization with high level of ethics um which is something that we are really passionate about doing right saving the environment but you know we are always ethical to our vendors to our suppliers and to our customers um definitely that i uh, do yeah i think those are the entrepreneurs that you know on a daily basis i would think of there are some great other um uh, larry and sergey brin because of what they did with google uh, elon musk for what he did with tesla and so um SpaceX uh Jeff Bezos because of the kind of um revolution that he drove within e-commerce so obviously there are parts of all these great leaders that I keep reading up upon but yeah that would be my long answer uh how do you compare entrepreneurship with a 9 to 5 job i think both are have uh their pros and cons um like a 9 to 5 job works for a lot of people um and it makes sense because you know you're kind of getting specialized in one area um uh, you know you have a chance to uh, you know be an important part of a larger organization um you know and there is a lot of impact of what you do there as well you know whether you're in sales or you're in marketing or you're in operations but however you know it's a uh, it's like you know once you're done whether it's a 9 to 5 or a 9 to 8 then um you know the one of the pros and cons is that you know you get to relax for the rest of the hours uh, as an entrepreneur i think the pros are the passion uh you know the feeling of building something of your own and i think that's what drove me right of creating impact which is uniquely yours uh you know like you are able to see something grow like i've seen this business grow from when it was just me uh, to nine people right now to it being a uh, you know large enough business to have a global presence um you know so that, those kind of things you know uh, i can see the impact a lot more however in entrepreneurship like i said it's a it's not a full time job it's a full life job you know you're constantly at it it's not like you tune off after 8 o'clock in the evening um there are so many times where you know we'll be sitting and watching tv but the laptops will be open and we'll be reading something you know or replying to an urgent customer mail so i think um depending on how you look at it can be a pro and a con i look at it as a pro you know it's something i i'm lucky to have found something that i'm passionate about to be want to give my entire life to it so i think that's the key difference you know that the fact that what happens after work and the amount of ownership you have of the work uh my last question to you udit uh how do yeah. you suggest our audience to start their journey as entrepreneurs uh i think what's very important in the journey of entrepreneurship is um two things the first is uh find something that energizes you um because an entrepreneurship if you're not doing it for the right reasons a lot of people want to become entrepreneurs because they're not happy with their jobs uh then i would suggest you should find another job because um an entrepreneurial venture requires a lot more energy and time so it, unless it is something that energizes you you know and you're passionate about every morning you know that this is the problem that i'm going to solve today it will become a chore and you don't want it to become a chore at the end of the day you know it is your venture so i think that is the first thing the second thing is uh, i would suggest is uh, build a bit of financial stability um you know while it is uh, you might have a great idea it's possible that others also have great ideas 
it also depends on how you execute it and of course there is a bit of element of luck um you know so if you are financially secure that you can take a risk i think that would be the best thing uh i am done with my questions with this uh, any final message you want to leave before we end um i think i've said a lot of stuff priya i'm not sure uh, what to add but i think that um uh india right now is a place with um billion problems for the billion people and i think each problem um is an opportunity for an entrepreneur to come in and solve it and make a viable business so if you look at it that way i think this is the greatest place in the world right now uh to build something so if you have an idea you know work on it and i think that uh, we need more entrepreneurs out there solving problems and if you can solve some in the space of uh, environmental issues social issues i think for me personally it's far more rewarding experience you know knowing that the business is going above and beyond and making a difference in other people's lives okay Uh, well uh, it was a great pleasure to host you here at ELI i think our audience would have got lifetime lessons from this video thanks for your time udit and our best wishes for ecorite of course thank you so much priya uh viewers you can follow and connect with udit on linkedin by searching for udit sud also do visit their website by typing eco uh, rightbacks.com So whom do you want to have your uh, TLI for yeah. episode uh, do let me know in comments below we'll be back stay tuned to TLI